Hey there, CJ Math students. Welcome to the Unit 4 Mock Test. Uh, these questions will be similar to the questions that you have on your test tomorrow, so pay attention and watch the video twice if you have to. It's a bit of a long video. I do my best to explain every problem and show you guys how to show work on your test tomorrow. So, section 1, it says parts of an expression. Use the following to answer questions 1 through 4. So, you got the expression 8xy minus 4x minus 2 plus 3y minus x. If I were you, I'd go through and say, hey, before I begin, I'm going to make sure I change all subtraction to plus a negative to make sure that I understand that the signs matter. So it says how many terms are in the above expression? Terms are simply <laughs> separated by plus or minus signs, right? So if I count the terms, I've got one, I've got two, I've got three, four, five terms. So your answer there is B. To show to show work on uh, number one, you could just simply put like the definition like that. Number two, what is a constant in the above expression? Again, to show work, you tell me what a constant is. It's a number all by itself. So if I'm looking here, the number that's all by itself is negative two. Negative two, the signs matter, right? You're going to want to make sure that you understand that going into tomorrow's test. Number three, what is the coefficient of x in the above expression? So again, coefficient is any number attached to variables. Well, if I've got a coefficient of x, remember a number or a variable, a variable by itself has a coefficient of one or negative one, depending on its sign. So if I've got negative x, that means its coefficient is b, negative one. Are there any like terms? Like terms are the same variable and same exponent. Again, if you want to show work on tomorrow's test, that's how you can do it. So uh, a doesn't make sense because this one's got x, y in it, so no. Uh, b, uh, yes, there are like terms, so that's out. Uh, C, yes, negative 4x and negative x, those are like terms because they both have the variable x and they don't have a coefficient. Uh, D, uh, 8, negative 2, no, 8 had xy to this. This is 8xy. You can't ignore what was attached to it, so that's out. So C is your answer. All right, moving on down to the next uh, part. Again, identify the terms, coefficients, constant, and like terms of the algebraic expression. Provide your answer on the lines. Uh, same thing we've done, just remember that the signs matter. So your terms, 3x squared negative 5x, make sure you include that negative, right? If you forgot to include that negative, you would be wrong tomorrow. x and 7. You do not need to put 1x, you can just put 7. What are the coefficients? All the numbers attached to the variables. We've got 3, we've got negative 5, not just 5, and we've got 1, that invisible 1 right here. You might want to put it down, right? Constants, numbers all by itself, that's just 7. In like terms, we've got negative 5x and x. If you put 1x, that's okay as well. Number nine, it says use the following expression above uh, to match each statement to the corresponding value. So the number of terms in the expression, we've got one, two, three, four terms. So that matches up with this guy right here. It says the like terms in the expression, y and 5y, boom, matches up right there. The constant, the number all by itself, is negative three right there. The coefficient of xy is six, and the coefficient of y uh, is 5, right? They could have also put 1 on there if you're going to be right. Um, it says use the word bank. You will not use every word. Okay, so when we have 9 plus 8 equals 8 plus 9, that is an example of the commutative property. How are you going to show work on a problem like this? Because I am going to ask you to show work. You're going to say, hey, the order of addition doesn't matter, right? You can flip the order and still get the same answer. Uh, when I change the grouping of 2 plus 4 plus 8 equals 2 plus 4 plus 8, that's an example of the associative property. Again, how are you going to sh show work? You can tell me what the associative property is. You can change the grouping and still get the same answer of addition or multiplication. And 5 times 0 equals 0 is an example of the zero product, right, property. That means anything times 0 times 0 equals 0. All right, let's go to the back side. 
All right, so it says translate each of the following uh, verbal phrases into algebraic expressions. So uh, number 11, it says uh, write the following expression, 7 less than minus x. But that's not the answer because remember that less than means you flip it, right? So uh, the first choice should be your answer. And to show work, you can write out all the other verbal phrases for those other answers, right? All right, number 12, it says 9 less than, so 9 minus Twice a number. Twice a number means multiplication, so two times n. But remember, less than, oops, sorry, didn't mean to cross it out. Less than means to flip it. So really, we're looking at two times a number minus nine. So again, your first choice is your answer. And again, to show work, you can go through all the other ones and write down verbal expressions uh, to make sure you totally prove to me, hey, I know why this is the answer. Uh, 57 more than means addition, two times Michael's score. We don't know what Michael's score is, so two times x, right? More than is the same as less than, right? Uh, we're going to flip it. So we're going to say 2x uh, plus 57, right? And again, for these phrases, you can write out all what they mean. So 57 times x plus 2, the product of 2 and a number less than. So you notice how I can show you how I know what less than means, right? So it says, which of the following phrases do you flip uh, the terms when writing the expression? And that is our favorite term, less than, right? All right. Uh, on the other ones, we've got uh, r squared plus 5. So we're looking like r squared plus 5. This one says r squared. It says more than, which means plus. So a is our correct answer. The other problems would read uh, 2r plus 5 or r minus 2 because the less than, remember, flips the sign. r cubed would be r to the third plus 5. Next one, 13 minus n. Uh, 13 less than n would be n minus 13. Remember that less than flips it. So that is not your answer there. Uh, n less than 13, 13 minus n, that is your answer. Twice n would be 2n, and n more than 13 would be 13 plus n. So b is your answer there. All right. Section 3, it says simplify in algebraic expressions. Be careful. Use your integer rules, DSSM, SSAK, or just use a calculator. All right. Here we go. When I go through, I see subtraction signs, plus negative, plus negative, and I'm looking for like terms. So negative 8 and negative 1, that's negative 9. Negative V and 8V, that's plus 7V. So A is my answer. I want to see that work tomorrow. All right? Next one, uh, plus negative right here, and go to work. Negative 4M and 6M, that's 2M, uh, plus 2 and negative 3, that's negative 1. So you're going to say, wait, I don't see 2M plus negative 1. That's because the answer choices you got to make sure you keep change, change as well. So therefore, D is your answer. Uh, here we go, plus negative. Uh, when terms cancel out, they become zero, right? So one plus zero, no, we don't even put the zero. It just becomes one. So D is your answer. When terms cancel out, you get zero. You don't even put down the zero. Number 20, again, go through, make sure you have your KCC. Remember, like terms, same variable and exponent. So K to the third is not a like term with 3K. So I f figure out, all right, these are like terms, negative 3k and uh, 7k, that's 4k. Uh, negative 1 is not a like term with anything, so I bring it on down. k to the third is not a like term with anything, so I bring it on down. And there is my answer, and a is my answer because I do plus a negative, right? Let's go ahead and uh, move on down to the next page. Uh, remember, when you are distributing, you are multiplying, not adding, right? So we're saying... 10 times 3x is 30x, and 10 times 2 is 20, right? So I want to see that multiplication. I want to see those arrows on tomorrow's test. Make sure you're multiplying by both terms, and then again, beware of the signs. Like on this next one, uh, negative 6 times a negative 3 is a positive 18, and then a negative 6 times a negative 7x is a positive 42x. Don't forget those variables. Uh, so B is your answer there. When you get to problems like 23, 24, remember you only distribute what is next to the parentheses. So in this case, negative 2 times 10 is negative 20, and then negative 2 times 18x is plus negative 16x. Then you drop down the 4x, and you turn this negative 20 into plus negative 20. Right? And you're looking for like terms. So like terms, 4x and negative 16x. That's negative 12x. And then you just drop down plus negative 20. So always be on the lookout for like terms. 
And then your answer choices don't freak out. Go ahead and change all those subtractions to plus negative. Match up your answer. C is your answer. Number 24, negative 4 times 3p is a negative 12p plus a negative. Negative 4 times uh, negative 3 is plus a positive 12. Drop down the 10p. We do not distribute to that because it's outside the parentheses. Uh, now I go ahead and find like terms. Negative 12p and 10p, negative 2p. Drop down your 12 because that is not a like term since it doesn't have p, and your answer is a. All right, 25, 26, it says find the perimeter. Remember, perimeter means add up all sides, right? We want to find the distance around an object. So we're going to have one long addition problem. Make sure you get every side. So x plus x plus 5 plus x, and then get our last side, plus x plus 5, right? Then we go through like terms, x, x, x and x, that's 4x, 5 and 5, that's plus 10, is your answer, 4x plus 10. Again, perimeter, add up all sides, right? It says, what is the linear expression for the perimeter of the figure? If it says perimeter, you should immediately say, hey, I'm adding up all my sides. So 6x minus 2 or plus negative 2, right? Uh, plus 5x minus 3 or plus negative 3, right, right here. And then plus 5x plus negative 3 again, right here. Like terms, 6x, 5x, 5x, that's 16x. Negative 2 plus negative 3 plus negative 3, uh, that's negative 8. So looking for 16x plus negative 8, not going to find it unless you do that, plus negative 8. There's your answer, okay? Uh, last page is all about evaluating expressions. So plugging in, when I say evaluate, you are going to get one answer, uh, one a number as your answer. You're going to plug in, right? Plug in with parentheses. So five, uh, sorry, y parentheses x minus uh, y when y is uh, two and x is negative five. So two parentheses negative five minus two. Close it up. I could do um, distributed property, or I could just do order of operations. Let's just do that. So parentheses first. Um, two times uh, two plus negative two gives you negative seven. That stays in parentheses because you've got a two right next to it, and then two times negative seven gives you negative fourteen. A is your answer. Uh, QP parentheses negative one plus Q when P is two and Q is five. Make sure you get those right when you got. Variables right next to each other, make sure you use parentheses. So parentheses 5, then parentheses 2, then you can write everything else, negative 1 plus uh, 5, right? Notice that one wasn't by anything, so I could just plug it in without parentheses. Order of operations, do the stuff in parentheses first. So there's an operation to be done right there. So then it's 5 times 2 times 4, right? Then work it left to right. So 10 times 4, and then we just got 40. Okay, there's showing all your work. Uh, last one, it says find the area. When you do area, we are multiplying. Multiply length times width. I shouldn't use the x. I should use a dot instead. So length times width, right? So if I've got 4x plus 8 uh, and 2 is my width, I'm doing something like this. 2 times times 4x plus 8, so it looks like this. I use parentheses because now I can use the distributive property, right? 2 times 4x is 8x. 2 times 8 is 16, so there is your expression, 8x plus 16. Now, when you evaluate, notice that keyword evaluate. When you evaluate, you're just going to plug in. So I'm saying plug in when x is negative 2, so 8 x plus 16, now just plug in for x as negative 2, 8 parentheses negative 2 plus 16, ah, oh, negative 16 plus 16 gives you 0 is your answer. Normally it won't work out like that, but uh, that's what you get. Alright, last one again, area, right, is represented by the algebraic expression. They're giving it to you. b1 plus b2 divided by 2 times h, where b1 and b2 are bases, h is the height. Find the area of the trapezoid. Basically, they're just telling you to evaluate. They're giving you all the numbers. Just plug in. So your expression, they gave it to you. B1 plus B2 divided by 2 times height. Numeric expression. Plug in now. B1, that was 8. Plus B2, that was 6. 
divided by 2. What was my height? 4. Use order of operations to solve it. We got 14 divided by 2 times 4. Order of operations says we must multiply or divide whichever comes first as we look left to right. 14 divided by 2 comes first. That's 7 times 4. And you get your answer of 28. And we always say unit squared, so feet squared. All right, that's it. It's a long video, but again, this is kind of like what your test is going to be like tomorrow. So study it. Understand the problems. Rewatch if you have to. Uh, good luck. See you tomorrow.